Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Another sunny day outside, but here I am on Sling Mountain again. As I've said before, it just works really well. Uh, thanks for joining us again. I keep banging on about this, but I'm like massively appreciative of it. it. It does mean a lot that people are tuning in and loads of real positive feedback as well, which has been like uh, properly humbling. So thanks very much. I can't look at the dog down there. He's staring at me. He doesn't really enjoy these video times because he gets no attention at all. I don't know about you guys, any of you with pets, I am talking to him an unhealthy amount, I think. Um, I, need to, I need to watch it when we go back out into the great wide world and start socialising a bit more because I think I've had more conversations with him than anyone else in the last little while. Uh, I need to be, yeah, I think I'm turning into my mother in that sense. Okay, so today's video is all about using a belay plate in guide mode, okay? So for me, I use uh, a Black Diamond ATC guide, works really well. Loads of other devices out there as well. Uh, the DMM Pivot is really popular. Petzl Reverso, yeah, loads of other ones. I'll often refer to them as guide plates. Like proper guide plates actually aren't quite like this. They're sort of plates of metal with two slots and a hole in the top. And uh, they're, they're more for bringing people up rather than doing regular belay. So these um, are the sort of evolution of those where they're a regular belay plate there. They've just got a hole added onto them basically so they can dangle off that bit to use them in guide mode. And they're really good, right? Um, why do we use them, is, I guess, is the question. Well, mostly it's for convenience and comfort, right? They do make it much easier to belay two people up at the same time, but then, you know, how often do you climb in a three? Some of you might climb in a three a lot. In a personal sense, not very often for most of us, uh, you know, sometimes, but not very often. For those of us working and guiding and stuff like that, we do it quite a lot, actually. So it's more useful for, for us, for sure. This isn't going to be a video on how to sort of manage people on stances to stop twists and tangles and that kind of thing, right? This is about using a guide plate itself, setting up for it, etc., and also how to lower someone down. Because if you are going to use one, I do think you need to be able to lower someone down safely as well. Twists and tangles um, in, in a work sense, do they matter? Well, yes, they do, really. Why? Because twists and tangles are normally sorted out by someone just spinning around once or twice so is it the end of the world well no not really but we're trying to paint a real clear picture to our, our, our clients aren't we so if, if they're getting confused by ropes crossing here there and everywhere you're just not maximizing their learning potential and it doesn't make you look exactly pro does it if you've got twists and tangles that they need to sort out and then maybe you leave them on the ledge and you go on up the next pitch and they're left when you shouted safe and they've taken off belay. They, they've got this massive tangles and they've got to spin around. So it's very confusing, isn't it? And for a potentially nervous person, it's something they just don't need to be dealing with. So be pro, practice it. It really isn't that tricky to make sure you keep those twists and tangles away. Just get a couple of things dialed and it, it's just steady away, to be honest. It's just not it's something I get remotely stressed about. It did for my assessment, of course, because I was, you know, I was uh, sort of relatively new to all that kind of, of, of stuff. And yeah, I practiced it, but it's a big deal in my head. Actually, when you get out and work with it, there's far more exciting things to be considering and stuff than that. It just becomes second nature to sort it out. But anyway, that would be a different video. Just the basics today. So what I'll do first is tie in. I'm going to just tie in as normal. Uh, there's a figure of eight already in the rope, which probably means this isn't the first take of this video. Sometimes I get them bang on first time, other times they take a few uh, attempts. And with this one, what I'm going to do is to simulate a climber in a couple of bits. I'm going to use some weights to dangle off. That's when it becomes a bit of a pain, actually. That's what catches me out sometimes. I've got 20 kilos of weight that I don't think you'll be able to see at the moment, but you will be able to see later as I move it around a bit. That's why I dangle off my harness when I'm doing my pull ups. Um, but that's uh, that's for another video. Right, I'm, I've done that video, haven't I? Uh, I'm tied in, all good. I've led up my pitch, I'm not safe or anything yet. I've come up, I found two solid bits of gear, which is, they're really easy to find on, uh, on Sling Mountain. Put my carabiner in, do it up, get that little join out of the way, because otherwise you can guarantee it will be in the way. My carabiners are gravity loaded. I'm not that fussed about gravity loading really. I mean, it's a nice to have and I'm gonna try and do it, but I'm not too stressed about it. What I'm more um, interested in is keeping gates away from the, the rock of Sling Mountain. So I've got my two bits of gear. I've decided they're solid enough. I've done my little overhand in there. 
equalised independent bit of an angle mega. I can now get myself safe. So find myself a carabiner, clip it and flip it. Makes it easier to clip and keeps the gate away from the rock. Safe. Great. Winning. Just tighten up a little bit actually, just for the video. There we go, so I'm a bit closer. What's next? All right, well I can take in the slack to my mate. Done that. I get my belay plate out, the guide mode belay plate. Now clip that in for now. I might change this around uh, in a bit. Sorry, I know that's really loud on the on the camera. Um, I'll change that around it in a minute to show some variations. Now it's dangling like that. Okay, personally, I prefer them facing out, but that's a personal preference thing. What you'll find is, okay, it's facing out. When you start to sit on them, they sort of spin around and you might have to change it. Okay, so just bear that in mind. I've clipped it in. What should I have done straight away? Do him up. Don't want to have to remember it in a minute. Okay, so he's all done up now. Taking in the rope to my mate. Then I'm going to load it into the belay device. And how do I load it? Well, I've got the teeth for the braking strand. I've got the smooth side for the uh, live rope, okay? Same as loading it normally. It does have a picture on it. I should say it used to have a picture on it. Mine's been long scraped away. So let's just get that rope sorted. There we go. Braking strand on the bottom, live strand on the top. Well, it's no use yet, is it? Because it's not clipped into anything. Spare carabiner. Now, some belay devices will uh, specify a particular carabiner. So I think the DMM Pivot recommends the, the DMM Rhino carabiner, fine. Don't think the ATC guide does recommend one specifically, so I just use that and it works for me. You will find you just have to practice with sort of different rope combos to find a carabiner that works. If you're using big chunky ropes, I'm kind of pointing down there because there's one down there. It can be pretty intense on the elbows if you get the carabiner combo wrong because you're pulling through uh, and it can flare up a bit of sort of tendonitis or whatever. Now, belaying is really simple, okay? All I do is I take in on one hand, this hand, and I pull down on the other. Slide to reset, take in again. Slide to reset, take in again. I don't do any hand swapping or anything. Hey, that's easy, isn't it? Great. Happy days. They get to the belay, they clip in as usual. We take that off, we put them on regular belay if they're leading through or whatever. That's simple, sliding. So that's a good reason for doing it in guide mode, isn't it? It's just nice and simple and quick and easy to do. Well, I'm doing this and they're taking a bit of gear out. It's really easy for me to keep hold of this, have a quick drink, do some re-racking, get stuff ready for the next pitch, have a sort of flick through the guidebook or whatever, all the while keeping hold of this braking strand. That's important. It's just a bit easier to be efficient with all this when it's in guide mode. That's my opinion, right? Okay, so that's what happens 99% of the time. You belay your mate up, jobs are good. And occasionally, they might need um, a bit of slack, right? Now, what I'm going to do for this next section of the video is I'm going to unclip myself. Obviously, I would not be doing this in real life, dangling off the cliff, but I want things to be as clear as possible in the video. So by having one less strand of rope there, I think that will work better. Right, for this one then, my mate's been climbing up quite happily, no dramas, they've just gone a little bit too high uh, to get a bit of gear out, or maybe they've climbed up a little bit and need to get back down to a ledge to have a, have a little shake out and a rest. They just need to have a little bit of slack. So I can't just pull it through because the device locks up, doesn't it? We know that. So what I'm gonna do is keep hold of this braking strand and just put a little bit of slack in here, and then I'm gonna grab the uh, carabiner and just open it up and I can pull a bit through. Okay, so that's okay to give him a, you know, a meter of rope or something like that. They climb down to take the slack back in and away we go. Okay, so that's nice and simple, isn't it? For the next one, right, they've climbed up a bit. I'm gonna hoof up my weights for this one. Uh, there we go. Let that bang around there for a sec. Uh, you can see that's, that's locking again. It's doing its thing. That's just gonna flick over, there you go. Um, so I can't do that and I don't want to just hoof this because it happens actually all really quickly. So I'll come on to that in a minute. But the easiest way just to give a lower someone down just a little bit is to sort of pump that carabiner through there, just wiggle it really. And you can see the rope's going through. It's not going through exactly super speedy, is it? You just wiggle it like that and away they go. So this is take he's gone about 30 centimetres, there you go. So you can do it and it'll go a bit quicker if you wiggle it a bit more. 
but it's not exactly rapid. You don't want to be lowering someone down the, you know, the whole length of the Cromlech or something like that, 40 meters worth, because they can't do the last move of resurrection or something. So it's not ideal for that, but for a quick bit of lowering, yeah, that's okay. So what can we do to lower someone down a longer distance, right, instead of just pumping the carabiner? Well, let me reset again. Just pull that up. It's a good workout, this one, isn't it? Uh, let that dangle there we go so what I could do at this point is get myself a spare carabiner and use this snap gate because it's got a light, nice sort of small end on it that will fit into the other little hole that we've got on our belay plate and I can use this like a lever now as I lever that open I'm going to keep a hand on this dead rope for sure the braking strand the ATC kind of does less and less work and the, the rope just becomes more and more around the carabiner only. So as I open it up now, goes a bit, goes a bit, goes a bit, just tiny amount, and then it will suddenly fly through quite quick. So it's, it's quite hard to manage it. So I could come up here and open it and just use it. You can see how that's happening there. It's still really jerky and it's, it's quite hard and you're having to let it slip through one-handed so I'm not really a fan of that if I'm honest. Yeah, it works but is, is it really super safe? As safe as it could be? Like I say, I'm not particularly a fan so let's just reset that a little bit, pull them up. How can we do something to almost like back up the ATC? That's the way I look at it. And There's a few methods of doing this and I'm going to show you the way I like basically because that's what the video is about isn't it it's what it's what I do I'm going to get that join up out of the way as usual skinny sling fits really nicely through the hole I tend to lark foot it into there all right pull them through I haven't let go of this rope so it's kind of okay to be doing all this one-handed right if I wanted to let go fully can't just let go like that put a knot in it right just an overhand Worst case now, that hips into there, jobs are good and no one's gone too far. Then I'm going to use this area that we call the shelf up here. I'm going to clip my snap gate. I'm using a snap gate, I just haven't got many screw gates. So it's fine for this job. It's not like a safety critical piece in my mind. And then I could lever that, but what would be much better, because this is going to take hands, isn't it, is if I could use myself for it. So I'm going to estimate a little knot here might need to adjust it in a second, so I've just done an overhand because that's quick to adjust. Let's go a little bit higher, just kind of guessing at this point really. Not guessing, estimating would be a better way of saying it, wouldn't it? And then I'm going to just climb up my little sling mount and remember in real life I'm tied in and safe on this belay, but I'm just trying to keep it as clear as possible. Okay, so what can I do now? Well, I could manage this breaking strand of the rope, put both hands on it, and I can sit back and I can, you can see what's happening, I'm lowering. And that really is breaking strands, giving the Z and everything. So that's kind of okay, isn't it? Yeah? It's a little bit awkward to manage because you end up having your hands up really high. Okay, so that'd be quite hard work to do for the 40 meters of the Cromlech that I've just sort of mentioned. So let's just reset that a little bit. I'm gonna pull my mate back up again. As I say, good workout, 20 kilos. There we go, so that's locking, and I'm back to this stage now. Let's tie that off again, and imagine that I'm just setting all this up, right, great, I've put my little sort of redirect in, that works quite well, doesn't it? What I wanna do is kind of take any reliance away from this ATC and do something else with it. Now, I could clip this carabiner into my belay loop, that would absolutely work. What I quite like doing is putting it into there because it extends it into a bit of space. Do whatever you see fit. And then you're going to tie an Italian hitch. It's not a video for tying Italian hitches, but that's the way I do it. Just kind of roll it and pinch it and clip that in. All right, so this is basically my new belay device. So let's just get that out to clear it all up because I'm holding on to the braking strand now. I'm not going to let go. So, at the moment, ATC doing its thing. Redirect, in there, ready. Italian hitch, in there, ready. Hands on there, in there, ready. First thing I need to do is release the ATC a bit. So I'm gonna stand up, take that Italian hitch in, and now 
I'm just going to sit onto that sling and I'm watching this, that it's opening up. And I'm going to start feeding through when appropriate on the Italian hitch. Can you see it sliding through the ATC? Perfect. This is so easy for me to do. If I want them to stop, I just hold on to that. All right, I want them to start going again, feed it back through. You can kind of fine tune it by leaning a bit more or a bit less, but it's all onto the Italian hitch. So I really like that method. There's other ways of doing it, absolutely there is, but that's my favoured way really. Um, so let's just take a quick picture of that mentally. We've redirected the ATC little pivoting thing up into the shelf onto me using my weight, so that means there's no hands required to do this bit, and then I've backed it up with an Italian hitch. It won't take you too long to do, and it just seems like a pretty foolproof way of luring someone any distance. The idea of luring someone just by cranking that open very far, I just, I just don't like it. Like I say, you end up one hand sliding on the braking side and it has to be kind of up here to do it as well. I'm, like I say, I'm just not particularly a fan of it. So that's my method of sorting it out, all right? Now, what else could we do in terms of setting up this slot without thinking about any releasing or anything like that. Let's just go sort of back a couple of steps. Okay, so you've joined me like back at the start really now. I haven't even set up an ATC guide. All I've done is I've just set up my sling bit, right? This time I'm gonna do something fractionally different. I'm gonna go through it from just from the start for the setup. I'll put myself in safe, because this is what I'm trying to do this time, just to demonstrate this bit. Get myself attached to that. I can shout down safe to my mate as usual, great. So last time I clipped the belay device into here and what sort of happens is it, it kind of, it's just all a little bit jammed up and I'd rather stuff was sort of operating in space, it's just clear and it's nicer to use. So I've got a couple of options really. Option number one that I like is that dreaded metal on metal. We don't like metal on metal, but we kind of do in a lot of cases. I think we do like it in more cases than we don't like it actually. Hey, this is really nice though, so I get meh. Mates rope, put them on belay, same as before. Great, getting the spare crab, clip them in. Oh, now look at it, that's nice, isn't it? Check that's the right way around, it is, good. I can belay them up, and it's all happening in space, and my rope's over here out of the way, so that's nice and clear. I like that a lot. Any downsides? Well, if that's weighted, right, and I do have to escape the system, how do I do that? Because it's all onto here. Well, it's fine, I just get a sling on and I clip into something and then I can undo this knot so it's no great shakes. But it is kind of on my point, so maybe that's a downside of that one, have a little think about the pros and cons of it. Let's release that a little bit just to give myself some slack to work with. Other options then, let's just keep it out of the way for a second. Uh, we could put the original safety point for me, my, my tie-in, we could use this handy little shelf down here that we always talk about, or up here even, don't know why I said down. Spin them shut, spin it around. Okay, great. If you ever do clip into the shelf, I like something to be clipped into those tails as well, because it is pulling the knot the wrong way, and would it roll open and put some shock into the system and stuff, perhaps. So even if you're not gonna clip anything else into there, in terms of safety stuff, put something in there, even if it's just a carabiner like that. Now this time, shouted safe, I've put my mate on belay and everything, I can put them into there. Clip it, do it up, flip it, great. That's great, so that's done the same thing, hasn't it? It's achieved a bit of space in this area. Other options are, oh, there's just, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say it's infinite, because I'm gonna run out any second, but this would work, wouldn't it? Clip it, flip it, I like that, don't I clip it and flip it. It just works really well, it's a nice little thing to remember. Okay, great, we could put that onto there. So I'm a bit separate, sort of, in a side-to-side -side way. Great, that works, doesn't it? So you've got a few options there, haven't you, of where to clip stuff. As long as it's a nice, safe, solid point, it's all good, right? There's pros and cons to each place. Have a little think, there might be a, a negative of, if I clipped into here, what if I put the belay device up onto there? 
that might cause a problem at some point. See if you can put that in the comments below as to how that might make something a little bit trickier. And let us know what you think. You know, um, if you use guide mode on your belay plate, can you do the lowering bit in a safe way? Have you ever had to? I, yeah, I have um, had to lower people down. And it, it's a bit of faff. It doesn't take long to set it up, right? When you're slick at it, and you've done it loads of times. But if I think I'm likely to have to lower someone down, I probably just won't put them in guide mode in the first place, right? And that's in a work sense more than anything. What could you use instead of guide mode to do a direct belay? Good old Italian hitch, that's really cool, isn't it? Uh, you can bring them up, you can lower them down, well easy. Downside, it hasn't got that, uh, that sort of breaking lock up thing going on, has it? So that's a downside, but it works really well. Lower someone down, well great, just shuffle it the other way as they lean back, none of this redirecting malarkey to do, just and they're down. So you can make your life a bit easier in terms of, um, of that, especially if you're thinking in terms of like rock climbing instructor assessment or something, I often get asked, oh, can we use guide mode on that? Yeah, absolutely you can, but I'd probably get you to lower someone down and I would expect you to do it safely. So you're just making your life a little bit harder. So if I really wanted a direct belay on an RCI assessment, personally, I'd go for an Italian hitch, makes your life easier. And you'll get this theme with this and other videos. For me, it's all about comfort and convenience. So. I like all this because it is convenient and it's comfortable for me, but don't get sucked into thinking guide mode is the answer every single time. That's all I'm saying really. I've said that when my mate falls off, all the weight goes straight onto the anchors and bypasses me and that's a good thing. And I do think it's a good thing. What do you need your anchors to be in that case? Like unquestionably good because there's no shock absorption from you. You're not in the system at all, right? It's all going straight onto them. So you've got to be really sure that they're solid. That's probably the case for every belay you ever set up though, isn't it, right? There's some pretty niche uh, times when, uh, in, in rock climbing I'm talking about now, when you're needing to protect anchors and stuff by being part of the system. We're talking some pretty sketchy places though, right? But it is worth bearing in mind all the weight is going straight onto that lot. So I've used two points there and in, in Sling Mountain, I'm happy with those two points. I'll often use three though. So what do I carry to make three anchors work in a sling setup? I use a 240 sling, right? So I can get all those brought into one big PowerPoint. I said earlier, you can use the rope to do that, okay? I'm not gonna show it in this video because I'm aware my videos go on for too long as it is, but there's ways of using the rope to have a PowerPoint and you stay safe at the same time. But in my mind, I try, if possible, to get a sling involved if I'm going to do an ATC guide type setup, all right? As usual, fire away with any questions. I'd be happy to answer them as best I can. Um, and, you know, if you've liked the video, you know what to do. Like button, subscribe button, find us on Insta, find us on Facebook, same as every other time I say this, then I waffle on about it. Um, but uh, thanks again for watching. More videos coming up very soon. Thank you.